Hi there, I'm Rob, and this video series will be showing you how to use Trello, an online task and project management system. One thing I've found is that new users are often intimidated by Trello because it doesn't look like any of the other project or task management systems out there. I want to take a second to give you a point of reference by explaining a bit about Trello's origin. Trello is based on a minimalist task management system from the real world. That system uses cork boards, index cards, and thumbtacks. When there's something you want to do, you write it on an index card and pin it on the left side of the board. When you start doing it, you move it to the middle of the board. And when you're done, you move it to the right of the board. In its simplest form, that's exactly what Trello is. Of course, the simplicity also gives you a lot of flexibility. Anything you could do with corkboard, index cards, and some stationery can be done in Trello. There are plenty of extra functionalities too, but I'll get to all of that in a minute. For now, let's get started in the most obvious way, showing you how to sign up for Trello. Odds are you got a link to this video because you're working with me on a project. In that case, I've already sent you an invite to join an organization or a board, and here's what that email should look like. Click on the big green button, and then you should have another big green button. It's not showing here, so there we go. And you can hit sign up, join organization, any of the other big green buttons. If you haven't received an invite, you can use the link that I provide in this video description. And again, look for one of the big buttons that says sign up. In any case, you'll be taken to a similar page. And if you got an invite, some of your information will already be filled out for you. Just choose a password or sign up through your Gmail account. And you're in. There are a lot of different ways to use boards and I'm gonna show you many of them in just a little bit. For now, let's just take a look at the basic use of boards and cards. You can get access to a board by creating it or by being assigned to one. To create it, you hit the plus button from any given page on Trello and you have the option to either create a personal board or a board within an organization. In this case, I've just gone ahead and assigned a fake user to a board. What you're seeing though is exactly what it will look like by default when a new board is created. For basic task and to-do boards, I do recommend adding one additional column, which is just a notes, references, and files section where you or people on your team can put cards that have information or attachments that may be useful to refer to later on. And in case you missed how I did that, you just click add a list to add a new list or column, which is basically exactly how you add a card. You hit the add a card button, name the card, hit enter or add. In this case, with a basic to-do board, the tasks are going to be the things that you'd like to be doing. You can then click on the name to see the other side of the card. You can leave notes, make comments, attach files, all sorts of stuff, and I'm gonna demonstrate that in just one second. As I decide to actively work on a project, I move it over to doing. That lets me and other people on my team see at a glance where various tasks and projects are at. To show you some different ways you can use cards, I'm going to go over to another Trello board that I set up for just that purpose. And the basic idea is to just leave notes on the index card so you don't lose track of or forget anything. As you make those notes, a lot will automatically update on the card. Small icons will appear indicating whether or not there's a note, how many comments there are, whether or not there are attachments, how many attachments there are, and so forth. This gives you a really good chance from either the card or the board page to see what sort of activity has been going on with the task or project that the card represents. Other visuals that can be seen from the board page are also available. That includes stickers and labels. And of course you can also label what your labels mean. The description inside the card can also have all kinds of fancy formatting. I'm not going to go into all of the details right now because when you go into the edit description, there's an entire formatting help guide. There are also lots of useful productivity tools, including making checklists. You do that by clicking the add checklist button over on the right. As you check off items in the checklist, it automatically updates visually. And once you've finished all of the items in the checklist, it turns green. For the sake of managing projects, having target dates is very useful. 
Target dates in the next 24 hours appear as yellow on the card, and target dates that are overdue appear in red. There are plenty of social features as well. You can tag people when you leave comments on a card. That will send them a Trello notification. You can assign cards to people, including assigning them to yourself. That will be helpful in navigating and organizing Trello later on. You can also subscribe to the cards or boards of team members to receive notifications and updates of cards or boards that are not specifically assigned to you. The subscribe button is the little eye icon toward the bottom right of the card. Other useful team features including voting for cards are also available. One of the most useful features of cards is that you can attach files of a variety of types, includes images, and when you attach images you get a visual on the card itself when you're looking at it from the board view. For those using cloud sharing, you can even attach Google Drive or Dropbox documents. While there are several ways to clean up your list, the simplest is archiving cards. You can also archive lists and leave boards if you didn't create them or close the board if you did create it. And to show some card manipulation in action, let's return to the Trello training video card that I set up can leave a comment on what I've accomplished, even set up a checklist if I want to get a more general overview of what needs to be done and what's been done already. Let's do a quick run on Trello navigation. You can press the Trello icon at the top at any time to go back to board view. There's also the boards menu at the top left. My favorite navigation, however, is found in the top right hand menu in the cards section. You'll notice that no cards are currently found here, so I'm going to go in and quickly assign some cards to this user and assign some due dates to give you a sense of what that navigation looks like. As you can see, we now have the various cards listed here. One of my favorite things to do for prioritization's sake is to arrange things by due date so that I can see any upcoming hard deadlines. This is the default view that I have and this is actually the Trello page that is bookmarked as my home page. Now you may have noticed that I've bookmarked several Trello cards as well in my navigation bar. Every single Trello card has a specific URL so you can bookmark those if you want to have even quicker access directly from your browser's navigation. Now when I move things to the done column, I remove the due date so that it no longer shows as being attached to that date when I look in my card view. When you receive notifications in Trello, you can also navigate to the applicable cards directly from there. And Trello email and app notifications will also send you links directly to the applicable card, board, or organization. You can adjust your specific Trello email notification preferences through the notification menu in the top right hand corner. You now know all the important Trello basics. In upcoming videos, I'm going to show you some of the specific ways I like to use Trello for both personal and group tasks. If you received this link because you are working on a project with me, I almost certainly will send you any additional links to other videos that are applicable to the work we're going to do. Please do feel free to let me know if you have any questions or thoughts. And keep in mind that the reason I like Trello is it's a versatile and simple tool. If at any point it feels like Trello is making work harder instead of easier, please do voice those concerns to me. Whether projects are personal, professional, solo, or based on group work, it's important that we make sure our tools are working for us and not the other way around.